Hello, everybody. This is the one and only Mr. LP Steven Simon Global Media, and we're sponsored by the Cross and Coleman Group of Lido Pizza. And today is 11 29, um, let's see, 2018. Oh, I keep forgetting the date. And I'm just hoping everybody's having a joyful and blessed holiday season. And today uh, we're talking about aids to charities, aid to communities. And what we're here to do is just try to help bring enlightenment towards those who are looking to give out to the different charities and community groups out there, groups out there who are just trying to get go forward, needing maybe more assistance during the holidays and having trouble galvanizing or reaching out to the communities. So we just wanted to provide a platform in order for uh, everybody to uh, join in. We're gonna have a couple of people in and out and we're gonna talk about a bunch of different charities and other things, so I appreciate it. Uh, we have a couple of people who's already joined on in. And hello, Ms. Ah, Misunderstood uh, Beats, Ms. Tolliver, how are you doing today? Hello. And I wanna join, uh, first and foremost, introduce my wonderful guest uh, for this evening, One, a long time dear friend. She is such a, a powerful, inspirational person. Um, she, yes, she looks that young because she's only 25, 27. <laughs> um, you know, we, we were in college. She was one of the youngest people because she was in college at 19 years old. So that's why she's looking young today. <laughs> we have the wonderful, in fact, I'm gonna let her introduce herself. I don't have the right, I don't, Cloud to say her name, so I'm gonna let her say it. Hello, my name is Jalise, and it is an honor to be here. Thank you very much, Ms. Jalise. I've been trying to get you on here for ages, and then things and stuff like that when we were formerly in live and radio and things, and now I got you here live. <laughs> I am so appreciative of you. Uh, first and foremost, before we go into the conversation, to, for those who are not familiar with all your talents and grace, um, please uh, tell them a little bit about yourself for a minute. Oh, well, like I said, my name is Jalise, and my biggest thing is I'm a personal trainer, so that's the majority of what I do. Um, I own the gym, own and operate it for about, I wanna say 11, 12 years, by myself, um, and then I transitioned into another facility um, called Everyday Sports. So, prayers up to this one. Um, I also teach, as you can see, all of the stuff behind me. <laughs> so, um, when I'm not training, this is what I'm doing. I'm teaching and I'm going around to corporate organizations and helping them um, keep, their, keep their workers healthier um, when it comes to their internal fitness and their mental health. So mm. that's me in a nutshell. Awesome, awesome, well, that works, that works very well. Uh, we're, going, we're waiting for a couple of groups on here to uh, join in parties and things like that, just to get the message out. But uh, before we, before, bleh, 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 before they get in, we're gonna jump into a couple of topics. And one of the first things out there is on um, the holiday season, and a lot of people are in need. There are a lot of, unfortunately, uh, um, there always will be a need in the world, but there's always opportunities for us to help out, give back, whether it's clothes, or money, or time, whatever the situation may be. But sometimes people are maybe uh, unfamiliar with what they days to uh, give back or in other words also like some tips on like what to look out for um, and see what happens so um, we're going to start off with a couple of things and, and please join in Miss Jalice to see what uh, your things are um, first of all one of the things they always say is talk about clarifying the values uh, you know you know the value of the book uh, or I'm sorry the uh, company uh, what do you think about them what do you feel they match uh, the values that you feel. What are your thoughts about that, ma'am? For me personally, each company is different. Um, when I'm looking for a charitable organization, I try to find out where the funds are going. Because mm -hmm. for me, if I'm giving you, if I'm giving you, let's just say $10, I don't expect, I understand that you that there are, um, that there are resources at play and that you have to worry about staff and different things. But if I'm giving you $10, I don't expect only four to go to feed the homeless and then the rest of the six to go towards um, your overhead. Um, so I tend to look for if, if it's 80% going towards the actual people in need, then I think that's pretty good. Right. I think that what happens in a lot of these things with these charities, uh, there was always these statistics about 
how much these charities cost and then organize. I think that it needs to be clear uh, throughout the day, at least with the major organizations um, and, and actually with all of them, but especially with these major organizations that get millions and millions every year, there needs to be some level of clarity about what uh, they are doing with these, uh, you know, with the money, how it's being used or how much is going towards the overhead and things or what does it cost uh, each year to operate? Um, I think, you know, like Red Cross costs like 20 million to operate or something of that nature. You know, the operation costs of uh, each year for these companies need to clearly be stated in order for people to have a little bit of better trust and um, understanding with them. Uh, wouldn't you say? I agree. Um, there, I wish I had looked it up. There is actually a website that breaks down um, how much goes to like when you're look when you're dealing with um, mm -hmm. charity. There's an actual website that breaks down how much is going um, to the actual people in need versus how much the charity is is keeping. And amazingly, from from my last review, the ones that we all know about aren't really on the top ten list when mm -hmm. it comes to actually using their fundage to help people because of mm -hmm. course as you get bigger they start giving more money to to whoever's running the who, whoever's running the foundation so mm -hmm. um, that's the unfortunate part a lot of times um, your smaller local ones local charities are the ones that are going to help those around you more because they're actually in it for the right reasons versus versus you know growing to the point where they're just having people show up for a job and then saying, okay, well, I'll give you a hundred thousand if you keep the corporation going. Mm. It a corporate thing once it gets bigger. That's the issue that I, that I've seen. I'm going to pull one link um, here. It is uh, called charity.lovethenow.com. What percentage? Um, and it's going to be up on a link and I'm also going to post it in uh, the chat for uh, people to see for themselves. But uh, what that uh, link does is, is exactly what you uh, stated for, at least for some of them. Like for example, the Red Cross, uh, let's see, they say the manage keep the administrative expenses at less than 5% of the total overhead. They spend about 91 cents for every dollar uh, to actual so programs. Hmm? I said that was a good one. Yeah. The Red Cross? Yeah. I've worked for the international one uh, some years ago. I volunteered, excuse me, and that was a lot. Um, and uh, I could see where, you know, from that division what happens, but I can't speak to all of it because there's a lot of moving parts and heads to that. Um, so you, you bring a valid point. Another one uh, just to bring up real quickly was a world vision. Uh, they say 85 percent um, goes towards uh, things. And then while they are well benchmark, they tend to spend more on fundraising uh, than other highly rated charities. So this has a lot of good information uh, towards that. Uh, there was another uh, site, uh, Consumer Reports, uh, just posted um, information about three days ago about some of the best and worst charities to give to. Um, and we're not here to speak ill of anything. And then obviously there's good and bad divisions of each one, but it's something to um, like an animal welfare, they got some of these things like, you know, highly rated, like uh, PetSmart Charities in Arizona. Uh, Noah's Lost Ark is the worst <laughs> rated. Uh, so I'm going to post this link also uh, within a group so everybody can have that information as well. Let's see here. So, so that uh, misunderstand beats. Yes. Hey, that she says exactly. I uh, appreciate your uh, comments much so it's always important to uh you know we really need to uh, figure out what to do uh regarding that another thing uh, to talk about uh regarding the charities i'll get back to my screen so forgive me it says identifying your preference ask yourself what is important to you uh, me in the environment education hunger animal welfare helping sick children um and where should it be like you know there's sick children or are you going to help in the nice area of town or you're going to go help children in the not so nice areas of town or county ask yourself if you want to support by a large uh charity or small charities which alluded to what you meant before miss julie's uh what, you, what is your preference may i ask i prefer to 
I personally prefer charities that are a longer gold. Um, I think the Angel Tree, for example, is a great charity because it does tend to help kids who are missing a parent or who are suffering. Um, but to me, it's still that one-time gift. So it makes them feel good for that holiday season, but then there's no, it's, there's no helping them progress in life. There's nothing after that. Um, so I tend to look for foundations that are a little more, a little more stepping stones so that not only are, am I helping you feel and giving you hope at this moment, but I know that later on um, it's helping you to make sure that you know that you need an education. It's helping to figure out what schools you need to go to for the kids. Um, it's, you know, it's passing them through society. If they're, if they're, if their family is down and out and they're in need of food, the organization doesn't look at them for that one time of the year and say, okay, I'm going to feed you for this holiday, but it's more of a, okay, we're going to help you eat throughout the year until you can feed yourself. Um, so exactly. for me personally, that's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, what's the continuation of afterwards? Because you know, you're going to be hungry 364 days out of the year. Right. <laughs> don't just feed me on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Now, I don't mean how to just say, hey, give me food all the time, you know, help. What are some of the barriers that's preventing? I think that's also a charity thing to identify the barriers um, because you can provide, but sometimes like, you know, okay, if I'm sick, one of the things I see all the time when it comes to like food, for example, people don't sometimes think um, they on the street and they give them a lot of uh, donuts or this bag of candy or a bunch of cake. And they, I'm not saying everybody, but you know, is that going to help them? You know, and especially some of them may be uh, older, some may be young, some may have sugar restrictions. A lot of people can't eat everything these days and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a, a lot, or they may be outside and something may not, you know, give them a cake. It may not with all these cherries and stuff. It may outside, you know, so we got to think right. about all those different things uh, for people. Um, I guess for me, uh, what's important uh, to me, um, or to be honest, all of it is, but I would say uh, for me, a, a lot is uh, homelessness and uh, mm -hmm. children and feeding. That's probably the biggest one for me. Um, uh, hunger and, you know, homelessness, those two. I don't think anybody should ever be homeless. I think it should be, a. I personally think it should be illegal um, and not to be on anybody, but I think that if someone's out there, we should do every single thing and try. Now, unfortunately, yes, will there be people who try to take advantage of it? Sure, but that does that doesn't mean you should use that as a as a means to not help people and figure out something to prevent homelessness. I think that you know uh, we should have shelters, we should have all types of security at these shelters uh, because there's unfortunately there are some uh, precarious and unfortunate. These shelters. I don't want to go in deep into that, but uh, at this time, but you know, there's a lot of different things. Uh, hunger. Um, there, there are different things. Amazingly, um, other societies, not in America, unfortunately, but there are other societies um, who have started using the 3D technology to build many homes. Oh um, yes, we posted some of those things before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the many homes. Um, of, they're they look like I mean they're very livable. Um, they're not fancy by any. They're you know if you ever if you have the time the chance I would definitely advise going to examine them, especially the 3D ones. Um, they're very secure. I think I saw one. Um, I watched a video of them making one, mm -hmm. and they were saying that the cast that they put um, it takes about three or four days to dry, but once it dries, it's bulletproof. Well, yeah, they had that. I, it was that I need. Goo? I need a 3D home if it's bulletproof. <laughs> but um, but so a lot of those, I think I think a 3D home, it takes it's harder right now because a lot of people don't have them. But I know there was, I believe it's um is in one of the South American countries, a company that started doing it. And I think they said that it costs about eight hundred dollars per home. Uh, it just takes a while. Yeah, there was um uh... There was a video, I want to say, you know, those uh, Now This videos, uh, I think I found it, uh, like, yeah, it was a, this one came out earlier this year, where um, it was, they were constructed for less than $4,000. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, and things. I'm actually going to post that link up now for people because that, that was I was like, wow, you know. And it's if you think about it, if you're a uh, those people who want to build these big lands and construction things, and they, you know, um, all these different buildings, restaurants, and things. But why not? Instead of all these mixed use or single use, whatever uh, type homes, you could take a good acre and put a lot of these tiny houses or small homes in there. You can put like a hundred of them in, uh, shoot, about three, about five acres. You can put a hundred of these things in there and plumbing and everything and boom, now you got families and some of them can hold, uh, they're all like, most of them are like one bedrooms, but just some of them, yeah, but they, but they could do like a 600 uh, square foot one bedroom, you know, would do very well um, in these things. Or, you know, if you can make it a two bedroom or, you know, one with a kid, you know, something like that. I don't understand why we don't do these things anymore. Because it's that, money. It's money. It comes down to to the fact that it doesn't helping a homeless person, someone who's struggling, doesn't help you make money. Um, it, it costs it costs it costs about fifty thousand dollars less to house someone than it costs to send them to prison. That's the crazy part. But prison is a money system, so they yeah. keep it going. That's okay. the issue we have. So once they find out how to make money off of the homeless, then they won't be homeless anymore. Once they find out how to make money off of it, then they'll put them in houses, they'll put them in mansions if possible. Um, unfortunately, that's society, the society we live in. And, it, and it's, it should be never about charity to help the homeless. It should always be about, you know, obviously um, giving back and you can, but looking always to try to make money off of things, uh, the homeless and people, it's sad. Yes. Um, there's a website uh, that we uh, want to uh, have uh, put up. It's called uh, GuideStar, and I'm going to put that up. And but with GuideStar, what they do is uh, is a nonprofit directory, and what they do is you can search all these uh, charities and nonprofits um, that um, I just found. Oh, I'm sorry, let me rephrase I found earlier. But what it does is it lets you have all these different things where people can um, uh, research the charity, see what they can do. Uh, uh, let's see, a benchmark, you can uh, check their benchmark of their ratings over the years. Uh, anything, also you can check out the Better Business Bureau and different divisions and things. So there's a lot you can do. Um, have you uh, have you done anything with any charities recently yourself? I have been working with a charity called um, it's called Global Purpose Academy, and it's a it's a nonprofit school, which is kind of crazy. But you know, as the name says, it's Global Purpose, and so they actually they teach the kids Mandarin, French, Spanish. Um, they have a oh, I'm missing one. Yeah. And of course, English. Um, they have a technology person come in um, once a week so that the older kids are getting STEM involved. Um, so it's, it's, to me, that's a really great program because it, you're immediate, but it branches you out so that you're actually learning about the world around you. Um, because of course, as you know, once you go out into society, it's not just someone who looks like you, like me. Um, we all there are different people, but the, one of the issues we have with the racism that we still deal with today in the country is that people are they grow up in their little communities, and their communities might be an all black community, it might be an all white community, an all Asian community. So, all you know about anyone else is what you see on TV. So, of course, if it's portrayed that all this race is this, you're going to think that because you haven't taken the time to educate yourself or your child. Um, so, see, um, which I posted on, on my page um, for the Giving Tuesday, and I also Bountiful Blessings, which is actually in your neck of the woods. Um, Bountiful Blessings helps feed those. Um, you know how sometimes, like, you might lose a job. You know, you're working, you're a middle class family, and you tend to lose a job every now and then, and maybe you can't find one immediately. Well, well, the government's not going to give you assistance because they're like, hey, you made enough money, you should be here, or you should be there. So they don't help you until you're way down. Mm. What Bounty for Blessings does is they allow the family um, during the good times or bad or whatever it is, the, pam the family pays 
twenty dollars. I think it's twenty dollars a month. It's some. It's something really low. They pay twenty a month, and they actually get to go in and go shopping into mm. um, into the warehouse. So they get different food, and once they go in and shopping, that food is free. They get to go on once a week, and the food they go in is free food. So they pay mm. their yeah they so they paid their their initiation fee you know their monthly fee and they get to go in once once a week and they shop and they leave and um and the 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 the, the lady who owns it um she does right now she's they're very small but they she does everything she doesn't get paid she's literally doing it you know because she knows people need it um she so what what she does is she goes to different stores and the stores donate you know, so they donate breads or meats or um, she, she has breads, meats. I, like she's had fingernail polish. She, you know what I'm saying? She has small clothing items. Just whatever the stores want to give up because, of course, it's a tax write-off for them. So they had nothing to lose. Um, so and then the only thing that she asks right now, I know she has a program. She has a program going on with, I believe it's Virginia State, where they have the land to grow vegetables. And part of the part of the part of being in in this community of Bounce of Blessings is you have to you have to also volunteer um, an hour or two of your time because again your money is going towards helping and not towards salaries. So to keep it that way, people have to actually give back. So if you're if you're getting if you're getting from the community, you give back to the community. And so you know, so she has a. Um, a farm, or not a farm, but a piece of land at I believe it's Virginia State, where they um, where they have a garden now, and mm -hmm. so they grow and then they pick and then again you come and you shop and you can get whatever you want out of that. So I'm working with those two organizations, which I think are great, but you know. <laughs> hey, there's, there's, you know, no, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we have a uh, group, um, and they're we're having a little bit of technical difficulties, but uh, Bountiful Blessings Community Services that you were mentioning about, uh, they're trying to join on and they're having a little bit of technical things. Well, so please uh, bear with us. They're going to us in a conversation. Um, but it's very uh Important here in Richmond, I know on the East End, there's some uh, gardens uh, that people have. So that's very important. Hey, we have a couple of more people that's joining in, watching us. Uh, hello, Miss Monique Duvall, my beautiful cousin. How are you doing? I appreciate you very much. Um, so uh, thank you for joining. So please feel free to talk about any charities or any groups in your area, things. Let me know. Post it in the chat here. We'll definitely. So I appreciate you very much. One of the other tips uh, that they talk about is, uh, you know, we talked about getting the cold hard facts and also checking the legitimacy. Uh, but, you know, uh, try to see about, you know, what information or what are they doing politically to get involved, like avoid and also sharing information, I should say. Uh, one of the things that they <laughs> is about uh, avoid charities that won't share information or pressure you, uh, won't discuss their programs or finances, uh, your tactics. Uh, willing to send literature about the, they're not willing to send you literature or direct you to a website or uh, will take no for an answer, you know, something like that. So be very careful. Um, I'm used to seeing sometimes you got in those uh, people, uh, uh, police charity groups that call you, hey, don't you want to help the community? Mm -hmm. You know, you're always scared that if you don't give them something, they're going to pull you over. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Uh, interesting uh, from the, uh, that standpoint. Um, another thing uh, someone will say do is try to avoid a middleman, a middle person. Try to give directly. What do you think about that? Uh, it depends on what you mean. To me, most people that you meet are going to be the middleman because if you're dealing, with, if I'm giving to Red Cross, I'm never going to meet the big person. Like you know, no. I might run upon them. <laughs> But for the most part, yeah. So um, I don't know. So that one, yeah, for me, it means nothing. Right, because I feel like you know, especially in a lot of cases, when you now everything is, you know, they got the cash app, the PayPal, uh, you know, your Google Pay, Apple Pay, all these different groups. So you, you know, to make it easier, right then and there. So. Right. That's a very important um, thing to do. So I'm not so sure about that one. Um, now, one. Now, before you move on, I would say that um, for me, 
it's a charity. So which means that it, whatever you give is a tax write off. Um, yeah. If you own your own business, then you can write off your time if you're giving back time. If you're putting in money, business can write off whatever you give. If you've gone out and bought toys, so you keep your receipts, all that stuff. And but the, what you have to do is to make sure they're legit. You need to ask them for their for their EIN number so that you can make sure that they are a charity. Mm -hmm. um, so um, because um, charities have they what is it called? Uh, what is charities have a special number? Do you know what it's called? Oh, um, I know what you're talking about. Oh, Lord and, Jesus. And well, um, it's the it's their tax write off. Um, once Bountiful Blessings comes in, or whoever you said was coming in, they can let you know. Um, but it's it's very important to ask for this number because that way you'll have it for your records, and when you're doing your taxes, you can write it off. So that way, you know, so it's helping you, it's helping people in need. Um, it's a program, uh, some call it a business number. It's a nine-digit business number that uniquely identifies your organization. Um, That's so the EIN number. So everyone has that. I have that um, for the gym. But there's a, there's, a, there's a number. Is that the RR number? Let me see. I, you... Keep talking. I'll see if I can find it. <laughs> yeah, because I had no problem because I, I see the uh, uh, RR number um, that they were talking about. Uh, charity number uh, to uh, mm -mm -mm. verification. Um, I don't see it. I, I know Charity Navigator usually has, you know, their charity name, but um, hmm. Uh, I don't forget that's the, I know there's a, I guess that's just the uh, tax EIN number. Um, so is, it, is it the same for them? Maybe? I thought it was a, a tax number for the business um, and things, the EIN number, but that's the all what I saw over the years. Because when you ask for the information and then like if it's something you need to verify, especially for auditing, uh, showing. Hmm. As far as I knew, but hey, it's something new. Um, you know, we both learning, but that's the um, uh, if there's another number, but I I could be wrong. Um, I have no problem. Hmm. Um, uh, but you know, now also keep in mind, here's something that's very a uh, key to this: tax exempt does not also means tax deductible. Yes. And everything, and um, I'm going to read this uh, thing that I got from um, one of the government sites in uh, CharityWatch.com. I'm sorry, .org. Uh, not all charities soliciting for good causes are eligible to receive a tax deduction. I see murderers. Hey. Hey. Uh, who's, who's, who's that? Hey. She's beautiful. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> the kids always act good when in front of other people, right? <laughs> no. Okay. Not this one, no. <laughs> yeah, she, she's she's like you, I take it. Uh maybe a little. <laughs> okay. okay. We're we gonna let that one slide. We're gonna save that for another. I ain't gonna get a little. <laughs> I'm not going to get you this time. But uh, they say many well-known groups engage in lobbying or political activity, which precludes them from receiving tax deductible donations. Tax exempt means that organizations do not have to pay taxes. Tax deductible means the donor can deduct con contributions to the charity on his or her federal tax uh, return. Request for charity tax exempt letter uh, is also very important. And the charity does not Letter indicating its status with the IRS, you cannot legitimately claim your con contribution as a tax deduction. So that's something very important. Um, I think that people need to uh, be aware of. Uh, you know, uh, thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, you ha have any no. thoughts? Okay. I nope, because I think that's it. Um, yeah, so I, I was just looking at the um the, one of the organizations 
And I see they have an EIN number and a bridge number, which I don't know what that is. Uh, uh, bridge, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what that one. Um, the other one is that don't be less with a familiar name. Some people will have their names uh, similar to uh, other uh, companies oh. and try to get money. You know, sort of like how McDonald's yeah. have the McDowell's versus the yeah. uh, McDonald's. Yes. So, you know, uh, don't want to call yourself Red Support and you're not part of the Red Cross. Right. You know, you know, have a bucket versus a cross, that type of thing. So uh, that's always uh, the one that is annoying me. And I know that sounds bad, but the, uh, what's the one with the uh, Salvation Army? The, um, fame, you know, they ring the bell or the kettle. Yeah, and, Salvation Army. Yeah, I wish they find another way. To, <laughs> I know that's the most immediate and everybody's used to it. That bang of the cow. And I guess just because my thing for me, I, I would always, I, when I see them, I'm all, you know, I see Red Cross, I'm going to give to them. But the, you know, I've seen some people like, one guy like, I ain't rain that thing. It's my you know, the oh. ring. No, see, I'm okay with the ringing. It draws attention to them. That's Say all that it, it draws attention. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, I That's know, but it's like, it, it man. For hours are you hearing that thing? So it's kind of like a little crazy. <laughs> yeah, but you're not there for hours. <laughs> no, no, no. So I just always felt that it, I wish it was another way. Because if they doing that, you know, you see Girl Scouts, they ain't ringing a bell. But, you know, they sure do pressure you to buy the cookie. They sit there with the sad faces and cry and everything. They do anything and get those cookies oh, sold. No. <laughs> you look, there's some... I don't know where I do, but there's some Girl Scout hustlers out there. Um, <laughs> like, and one of the things is don't be uh, enticed by the emotional <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, make sure they register. They say um, also nearly all non-church charities with more than fifty thousand a year in income must file financial information annually. Um, Thirty now. Here's an interesting thing: thirty-nine states in the District of Columbia. Columbia oh Jesus, I'm struggling today. <laughs> It require charities to register annually. Bear in mind that the registration in or in itself is not a stamp of government approval or endorsement of the charity. Right. Charities with um, under 50 grand also require to file limited information annually with the IRS. So there's some uh, whole bunch of different things with that that could be done. Um, it's very interesting. Um, Let's see. Uh, the bountiful people are still tr uh, still struggling. I apologize <laughs> for the delay. I don't know what uh, the issue that she's having at the moment, but uh, we hopefully uh, can get them going and things. What are some uh, um, bigger charity groups in your area? You are in Georgia, correct? I'm in Georgia right now. Um, one of the charities that that I actually like. I like the program they have. Um, and the charity is through it's through a group of churches and the churches that um the ones that i know of are methodist churches and what they mm -hmm. do is um they take in families and they share so a family would come into one church for a week okay into a church for a week and during this week of course they get fed they get you know they they get to take showers and clothes and you know all the basic things um they have volunteers to come in with you like you, so you're not in a church by yourself um so there's a volunteer there at all times and they actually put the parents through a program to help them get jobs um or their or perhaps education or whatever you know get a and so you go through a 10-month program so you just go from church to church during this time um so that you so that you and your family aren't homeless while you're getting on your feet i love that so that's another one that I that I step into every now and then. Okay, no problem. Uh, she says she signed in. She just can't seem to get her camera going. I'm not sure why. I really apologize. Uh, but that's a very good group. Uh, mm -hmm. There's another one that uh, they took they, uh, the former people who were formerly homeless. They could work at a factory building coats for other homeless people. Have you seen those things? I have not, but I like it. Yeah, what they do is like some of them who are uh, still homeless or um, other needs, they make coats for people and children and also 
over things that you could wear as a coat and also zip it up on the side to make it like a sleeping bag type of deal. Oh um, no, I have I saw the, I I have seen the um the I guess the article on it. Right. On that. Was, somewhere in Texas and I, I got to find um find out about that, but that was a very good uh group uh that they take and things. So um one of the things um I will say uh the try to also to donate and I know a lot of people don't want to do it because they want to keep their own stuff but sometimes if you're if as long as it's not like beating up the crap um but if you have old cell phones look to donate them because what a lot of people do is give those phones out to uh people of uh you know going through domestic violence situations or children uh, who are traveling far for school or certain situations like that they do that in order to help people um that's something that's um Okay. Um, the cell phones. Uh, one of the thing, uh, one of the things that's not being done uh, as often, and I understand why, but a lot of people are not donating cars to charities anymore, especially uh, with uh, families. Um, I, and one of the issues I've seen is that you know not everybody can get a minivan. I mean, it's just not the situation. But sometimes the hardships, such as um, maintenance. Insurance can be very difficult, especially if you're low income. Okay, thank you for the car, but you, I can't pay the insurance. Right. Uh, I think something needs to be done regarding that to try to make it. I think that we need to have a reduction of things um, regarding that. Would you agree or? Uh, I mean, kind, kind of, but not really. In all reality, you don't have to have insurance to drive you should um you know you should but you don't have to but most people who don't have insurance can pay if they happen to have an accident or you know they can cover it well see in some states you don't but like in virginia you have to have insurance even if you're not driving the car they make you have the insurance <laughs> or you pay the, or if you pay the 500 dollar, you know non-insurance motorist thing um, mm -hmm. but you know that could be just expensive, but that's five hundred dollars. It's five hundred. So, so. Yeah. Uh, one of the things they talk about also is nine ways to teach your child about uh, charity <laughs> um, and things. So, one of the things is that you can help teach your children about charities is to donate clothing, um, especially you know Goodwill, Salvation Army, uh, Red Cross, those type of things, and usually taking your children to drop drop clothes off or have them. It's something that's important. Um, would you agree? I do, but for me, I think it's more important to actually give back time. I think time instills charity in them more so than giving away something that's old and I, I don't want it anymore. I'm not using this um, type deal, or I can't fit this, or mm -hmm. I've outgrown this toy. Then it's like, ah, what are you really giving if you're not going to use it anyway, or if you've outgrown it? Um, mm -hmm. You, if, but if you take them to a nursing home to talk to the elderly who haven't had visitors, you know, then that's that's more about time. So. Hi, I think we got them. We got them. Hello. 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 How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you so much for your patience. And that's not Thank a problem. You. We're going to move it around here and things that so you, you're the focus of the day and things. So I appreciate you joining uh, us. Uh, so for everybody who may not know, uh, please introduce yourself. Oh, Hello? You said introduce myself? Yes, please. Okay, because I apologize. My phone is freezing. Computer already messed up, but the phone is freezing. Um, okay. My name is Pearl Cooper, and I am the executive director as well as the founder of Bountiful Blessings Community Services here in Virginia. Mm. Wow. Thank you so very much for joining us. And thank I'm going to let Ms. Jaleesa ask you some questions. <laughs> so, Ms. Cooper... Um, what exactly does your organization do? My organization is founded to take care of the working class individuals. What we started, um, well, we started, I founded the organization back in September of 
2015. And as of July of 2016, we got our nonprofit organizations certification to be a 501c3. And what we do is we work with the working class individuals as well as with seniors to help them put food on the table or household goods in their home. We help individuals that are trying to save for their future. We help individuals who are trying to get out of debt. So basically, by you being a part of this organization, you put yourself in a situation where you're able to either save money because you haven't been able to do it before, or you put yourself in a situation where you're able to keep your head above water or actually swim rather than just kind of floating. You know what I mean? I do. I do. Um, I was um, trying to explain earlier from what I recall of the organization, the, the members within also give back, correct? Absolutely. That's what kind of makes us different from a lot of other organizations that are out there. We don't just give, but we require that the members also give back to us. And in other words, what they have to do, they pay a small membership, but also they're required to come in and volunteer. And therefore, everybody that's a part of the organization feels like they have self-worth. It's not a situation where you're going in and you're getting welfare, but you're a part of that organization. What you do actually helps us to help other people. So it's a community, it's a family. Right, how much time is required to volunteer? Per week, per month? A minimum of two months, I mean, a minimum of two hours per month. Okay, like two months. Minimum. (laughs) You just live here. (laughs) Okay, good. And you do have, um, so you said said that you do have your 5013C, um, correct? And you have your EIN number? Yes. So when someone, um, let's say someone wants to give to your organization, um, is it a tax write-off for them as well? Yes, it is. Anytime that you have the status of a 501c3, then those individuals that donate do get the write-off. Okay. And one more question, and then I'll let Mr. LP ask you a few things. Um, mm-hmm. You said that you started in 2015. Um, sure. Do you know how many families you've been able to help thus far? And what do you need in order to help more? Um, as far as from the time that I started and actually started getting food donations, clothing donations, and so forth from various places, I have been able to help on an average, and I usually calculate weekly, mm-hmm. I have been able to help on a weekly basis over 100 people, um, and that's 100 people a week. What I normally do, I have families that I help, but I also have other organizations okay. that when I get more food than I can disperse to my members, then I share with other organizations in the area, other nonprofit organizations in the area so that they have sufficient food for the number of people that they're trying to feed as well. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't mean to no. cut you off. No, you you're doing, no, you're doing great. I just said excellent. No, I love it. I love it all. I love it all. Um, so what do you know? What do you need now? I know that you posted on Facebook um, for Giving Tuesday, which, uh, which makes me believe that you're in need of something. Um, what can those watching now or who will watch later on, what can they do to help the organization if they don't need, if they don't need your help, how can they help you? Oh, absolutely. Well, as far as being able to help my organization, what I'm trying to do right now is um, save my marriage. And when I, <laughs> when I say that, right now, everything is being run out of my home. And so with product, pretty much overtaking my living room, a bedroom, and my office. Um, My husband has been really nice about allowing me to bring everything in, but it has really reached a point where I don't have anywhere to walk. I do have a small storage space that I'm using as well, but that just kind of indicates the type of product that I'm getting in. Um, 
And so I am actually trying to raise money to get a space that I can have people to actually come in and have product displayed and they can shop from there instead of coming in and having to open up boxes and going through stuff that takes so much more time. If I can have stuff already displayed, they can come in, they can walk through and get what they need. And it'd be more of a shopping experience, which is what I'm trying to get to. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Miss LP, do you? Yeah. So uh, I'm just listening to all of this and then I'm just in total awe um, about it. So please forgive me for my lack of um, interaction. I'm just hearing the wonderful blessings and the joy that uh, good spirit, uh, you know, passed through you to offer all these things. So for uh, perhaps of someone who's been through these situations and many others, thank you. Um, and that's not even enough, but just thank you uh, oh, for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it was it was actually birthed out of my husband and I went through some things and we had nowhere to turn because of the amount of income, you know, from our jobs. But it doesn't matter how much money you make, you know, you got money coming in and you've got so much more that need to go out. It doesn't matter what your paycheck says you make. Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you don't have enough money to cover your expenses. So right. that's how it got birthed in the first place. Because when we, we went through some things and we had nowhere to turn because our paycheck said we made too much money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, not, that's not good. What about when, when you see that, and what do you feel that could be done more in a community? And I would say in terms of others uh, who are things and such, what do you think the uh, local community, community in terms of other individuals and families could do more to help and also the government? Well, to be honest with you, I am trying to stay away from the government. And I say that because I found when I went through training, with um, Feed More, I found out that a lot of people that go to food banks and so forth to get help, they're not allowed to get help for an extended period of time. They may be able to walk in and get a couple of bags of groceries that day, but they can't come back on a regular basis until they get back on their feet mm -hmm. if their paycheck is over a certain amount. If they make a certain amount of money per year, then they're not allowed to continue to get that assistance, even if they're at this time going through a hard time. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's because of the government standard. So that's why I try to stay away from the government and offer something that they don't get to tell me that Xavier makes, because Xavier makes $50,000 a year, that Xavier should be able to make it on her own and she doesn't need assistance. If Xavier's run up on a hard time and she needs assistance, she might need it for a month. She might need it for three months. She might need it for a year to really get back on her feet. And it's not fair to tell her that she can't get the help that she needs because she's somebody that's willing to go out and work and try to make it on her own. It's not fair to tell her that she can't get that assistance and so with that, once I went through that training and found out how they were set up, then I backed off of Feed More and said that this was something that I needed to do, getting other funds and being supported in another manner rather than having to go through them. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. people that I know that are working, that have food banks that are a part of Feed More right now, is that's their biggest complaint, is that they have a lot of people that come in that need help that they have to turn away. I don't want to have to turn anybody away. Right. I think that's that's just what that, I think that's personally and professionally. <laughs> I think that's sickening, horrible. Um, you know, you can't base things off of people's income all the time. Someone could be making a hundred thousand dollars a year, but if they're, you know, that person could be uh, loss of a job. That person could be dealing with, uh, you know, taking care of both parents in a senior care facility. I don't care how much money you make. That's an income that's gone. 
somebody in college. I there are plenty of broke one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year, not just combined but single, and still broke because you have a child in college and one or two parents may be sick and you know, all these different things, and they want you to be basically out on the street, and even then, that's not good enough, because you may be sleeping, I've seen where groups where you may be sleeping in a car with your kid, and but you, because you're still earning an income, and you're doing whatever, you don't qualify, you're not good enough, they tell you to sell your car, so now if you sell your car, you can't get out of school, so there's a lot of different things uh, that, you know, just makes no sense, and I think a lot of these things need to be reevaluated, and the reason why I, uh, and I hear you, and um, you're absolutely right, but our only reason why I would say our challenge is that to that is, is that I would want somebody like you involved government-wise to inform and to educate, because what happens a lot of time is the top, everybody says, oh, we'll just create a program and just do this, that, and the other, but they don't actually have a understanding what's needed on the ground level, someone like you and many and millions of others in throughout the U.S. and throughout the world who are on the ground level, who know what they need in our communities. You here in Richmond being known what's needed and what might work in a country or, or somewhere or a major city may not work in a mid to lower end city. So there's a variety of things that need to be addressed that you just did right then and there that I assure you nobody in you know even thought about that because they thinking about it from their pockets versus what actually needs to happen um the, the other question i would like to ask you is uh for those who don't know um if you don't mind sharing what kind of background and training and education uh and you, you mentioned that you know some things led to you and your husband getting involved if you don't mind elaborating that and also what type of training that you got involved well, as far as how I got involved in being um, or starting this nonprofit had nothing to do with my educational background or anything. I actually went to school for vocational industrial education. Um, I worked in the school system for a little while, but basically I have worked with special needs kids. I've worked um, in the regular classrooms, just general population. And I saw a lot of kids that were struggling. And when I worked in the daycare, which was the last position that I had, when I worked in a daycare, I had to do a research paper and it was concerning the diet and learning abilities. And I found out through that research that a lot of kids that are having behavioral problems a lot of it is because of malnourishment. It's a situation where they're not getting the food that they need early on and they're not getting food consistently that helps feed the brain. So they have energy to run around and play a little bit, but they're not getting the nutrients or the nutrients that they need to have their brain function properly. And mm -hmm. seeing that firsthand as much as I did and a lot of kids got in trouble and that research that I did actually helped me understand a little better that that's why a lot of kids do what they do. It's not that they're bad kids, but their brains just didn't connect everything the way that it needed to because it wasn't nourished properly. And so starting this program originally had a lot to do with not wanting kids to have to go through that unnecessarily and walking through the grocery store, I would see time and time again, and my husband would tell me, mind your own business. But I would walk through the grocery store and see people putting a lot of filler foods in their basket, but not nutritional foods in their basket. And their thing is, I don't want my child to go to bed hungry, but they weren't thinking about the fact that, or it never dawned on them that they're, they're getting filler foods, but they're not getting nutrition to develop the way that they should. Mm -hmm. And so people talk about like other areas where kids are malnutrition, you know, deal with malnutrition, but people aren't thinking about the number of kids in the United States that deal with the same thing. 
because I live in a fancy house and my parents drive a nice car doesn't necessarily mean that I'm getting the food, the proper food that I need. And again, parents are trying and they're doing their best. They're buying a home to get out of an apartment or to get out of the ghetto or wherever. You know, a lot of people that I know that move from the city, they were trying to move their kids, considered themselves moving their kids to a safer area. And they ended up in a situation where they purchased a home. Well, manager out in the county, bus system isn't the same as it was in the city. So now I need a car and I need to pay insurance for that car. And now I've gotten rid of one problem to a degree, but now I've created another one. And so in order to keep my house, in order to keep my car, to be able to keep my job, now I don't have the money mm -hmm. to buy proper groceries. And so, again, that's kind of like what I'm trying to take care of. So, yeah, I, 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 I went to college, but my work experience and I would say my heart, my dad was always the given type of individual and he would give you the shirt off his back kind of thing. And he would give you the shoes off his feet. And that's pretty much how he raised us. And so when I saw people in need, and then I would listen to people that I work with talk about what they were going through. And they're working three jobs. Some of them are working three and four jobs. And it's like, I don't get to spend time with my kids because I've got this job and I get off this job and I go to the next one and so forth. I leave in the morning before they get up. I get home at night. They've already gone to sleep. So they're not getting time with their kids, which is something that's really important. How are you going to raise a child? the way that you want them to be raised if you're not there. Mm -hmm. And so trying to do stuff like that to help the household, ho household itself, to help families, because you can't really be a family if you're not there to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. And I can't really be a parent if my child is being raised by their coach or their teacher or the person at the daycare yeah, those people are probably okay, and they're probably good people, but they're not going to train my child necessarily the way that I'm going to train my child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, as we all know, you have kids, and it's okay. You know, like my parents, the way that we were raised, if I left my house and I went somewhere in the neighborhood and I did something, I didn't have any business then everybody in that neighborhood knew that they had the right to correct me because that's just the way that my parents did it. But nowadays, mm -hmm. you don't want that going on. First of all, you don't necessarily know your neighbor well enough that you, know, you would trust them to raise your child or to make sure that your child is doing things the way that they're supposed to be done. And you really don't know their standard as such. You know, we don't, we, we're not neighbors like we used to be. I grew up in an area where everybody was family. Well, now I have neighbors and I kind of sort of know them, but we're not close like that to where I would tell my young child to go next door and stay there all day and I'd be comfortable with that. The mom might be okay, but I don't know who the dad is, <laughs> you know. And so, like I said, stuff like that, just trying to help families be families and people to be there for one another is also important to me. So again, if I can provide a service through this organization that helps a, a single mom, or even if it's a, a mom and dad in the household to be able to give up a job, if they're working two or three jobs and they're able to give up a job and spend time with their family, then I feel like what I've done to help them has been worth the sacrifice that I've done to get it done. Again, does that mm. make sense? Because I rattle on sometimes. Yeah. No, perfect. No, no, okay. no I, I'm just um, 
like I said, I'm personally, you know, and I know many of others who are watching or who will see this are blown away by the massive amount of information and knowledge uh, that you provided because a lot of people are probably not aware of these situations. So definitely um, the education uh, level that you provided is uh, is tantamount to our society's success as a whole. So I thank you. Um, how can people um, again? Can people get in contact? I'll have your press kit. We're going to post this online in the uh, comment section below uh, for everybody to uh, see. But how uh, can um, people get in contact with you in your website and such? Okay. Well, the website is bb as b as in boy bbvirginia.org is the website and they can contact me on Facebook. I, I'm there, Bountiful Blessings Community Services is on Facebook. And also I give up my phone number. I mean, they can call me if they're in this area and they need help, they can call me and that phone number is 804-551-7649 and they can call if they need help or if somebody's watching this and it's not necessarily them that need the help and they know somebody that needs it, they can give me a call. Like I said, I've been blessed enough at this point within the short period of time that we've been in business that I have several um, partners. And most recently I partnered with Walmart who is donating clothes and household goods and so forth. So, um, food I get from various farms in the area when, you know, it's that time of the season. And then Wawa's and, and Longhorn Steakhouse and so forth have been donating food. So i um, trying to get to a point where I actually connect with some of the businesses, businesses in the area where we can start maybe as a group purchasing food so that we can get stuff at a better price that'll make it easier as well for individuals to put the healthy foods in their cabinets or in their refrigerator. But um, it's all a work in progress. And definitely, if you know somebody or um, if you yourself, please don't let your pride stand in the way. Um, I can remember my dad saying when I was younger that pride coming before the fall. And time and time again, you hear about individuals that are losing their homes or mm -hmm. they, they've lost their car and so forth. And it's lots of times it's because of pride. They, they don't want their neighbor, they don't want their coworkers or whoever to know that they're going through, but they need to understand that they don't have to do it by themselves. There is an organization that's here that's trying to help, that wants to help. And we're even trying to get to a point where if you're somebody who makes decent income and your problem is that you don't know how to, to be a good steward over what it is that you make, we're even trying to offer classes and so forth to help you better manage your money. Because again, it's not just what you make, but what you do with what you make. Amen. And so if it's a situation where, you know, you make decent money, but everything that you make is going right back out the door, you will never get to a point where you're no longer a part of the so-called rat race. You'll always be on that little spinning wheel, just trying to keep your head above water, trying to keep going. And everybody needs, everybody needs a break. Everybody needs rest. If you're an individual that, you've been saying for years that you want to save and you've never been able to save. Well, this program is something that wants to get you to a point where you can save money. Mm -hmm. You know, you always hear about that. You're supposed to put what? 16%, 15% pay yourself first. I'm sure you guys have heard that before, yeah. but if, if you don't, if you pay all your bills and you don't have anything, or even if you say, okay, I'm going to pay myself first. And then you look back and say, well, but if I pay myself when, when it's all over with, now I can't pay my electric bill. 
then something's still wrong and you still got to get some stuff done to get to that point. Mm-hmm. So, especially when you got people now paying 65 to 75 percent of their total income that goes towards their uh, housing. So that's an issue for a lot of people. And, you know, I, I one of the things uh, years ago, I used to try to help people understand annuities, uh, invest in life insurance and all these different things. But then when you're paying all your bills and then, you know, imagine if you have two. let's say you're lucky enough to have and I hate to say lucky fortunate enough, excuse me, to have both parents in a home. And bo- and they may be both earning $10 an hour. But after mm-hmm. you were struggling to probably maybe make the rent, and if you have one or two children, you got lunches, food, and then if you got two parents at home earning $10 an hour, you don't qualify for assistance for lunch. So then now you have that, you don't, um, then they may be working second jobs and going through the aspect of not being able to raise the kid the proper way, as you suggested. So mm-hmm. now you are got two jobs, you know, car, car insurance, maybe the bus, you're paying a hundred dollars or more on metro fees wherever you are in the world. So now after you get all of that, you don't have cable, um, you don't have internet, so now you, you don't have access to high speed internet access for your education purposes, look up colleges, training, tutoring websites, whatever the case may be for your child. And maybe you're looking for a better job for yourself to help your family. Or you maybe try to take a night class. So there's a variety of different issues that and now you're asking for all of this, and at the same time, you want them to be healthy. Uh, we didn't talk about annuities, life insurance, all these other things that some say, well, everybody should be having and not planning, but you're not thinking about where people are. You're not meeting them where they are in today's life. You know, those who are struggling with food are not looking at life insurance right now. Right. That's right. That's right. Because as important as that is, and you and I both know it is, it's more important to me as a parent to make sure that my child is not hungry. Mm-hmm. So like you said, yeah, I know that I need insurance in case something happens to me so that they have something to kind of help cover expenses for them. But at the same time, whether it's medical expenses or whether it's health insurance or whether it's life insurance or whatever, all of that stuff gets put on the back burner because I'm trying to take care of these kids that are right here in front of me. They need food, they need clothes, and any child, you know, if something's going on at school, they want to be a part of it, you know, especially once they reach a certain age. So you may have kids that, you know, are in high school or junior high school or whatever, and they want to participate in sports, and they they don't want to be the child who is always told, you can't do so-and-so because I don't have the money, and you don't want to be the parent that always says, I don't have the money. And so, again, finding a way, trying to come together and find a way so that there is income in the household, so that you're not just living paycheck to paycheck, so that you can save money, so that you can have money for emergency funds and and things like that. All of that's important, and all of that is something that we're gradually trying to, to help make happen. It seems like every household, to me, it seems like every household should be able to have money put in the bank in case there's an emergency. I shouldn't have to go to a payday loan and and get money and end up in that cycle because something happened and I missed a week from work and now I'm trying to get caught up. You know, and unfortunately, that's one of the cycles that a lot of people have gotten themselves in that it's payday loan. I pay that off, but I turn right around and borrow it again. And so I never get out of that situation. And so if we can get it to a point where people are actually able to save some of their income for those emergency funds, they don't have to get caught by those type of traps. Mm hmm. Very much. Ma'am, this has been very educational, helpful, and gosh, there's so much more. Um, You provided a lot of information. I know we kept you longer than scheduled, but I appreciate you. uh, The (laughs) information that you uh, provided to us. I thank you. Well, thank you. And again, thank you as well as Xavier for the uh, for the hookup. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for the service you're doing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I look forward to doing more.
No problem. Thank you very much, ma'am. And we'll catch you shortly after the show. Okay. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> that, that was very powerful. That was very powerful. Yeah. She's definitely doing good work. Uh, this is why this is one of the ones I support. I know her heart is in the right location. I know, I know the struggle she's been going through to do it, which just solidifies that she's doing it for the right reasons. So I think it's definitely worth looking at. My glasses and things, but I uh, need to get some new glasses so they're not sitting and fitting correctly. So apologies to everybody. Uh, but this has been very helpful. And again, everybody, please make sure you look into your local charities, your groups. Uh, sometimes they're not able to get out and do media because they're out there trying to help and service the community. You never know what's needed. And uh, please, if you're just joining in, go back through out the video uh, early tips and tricks. Uh, other fans to research and look into other companies and organizations and how to find out um, more about them. So they're very, um, it's very important that we stay active and, and involved uh, within our groups. Uh, the one of the things, sorry, go ahead. Uh, before you, before you say goodbye, because I know you're getting to that point. I just want to, um, I just want to tell everyone that I know sometimes it's hard to give. Um, when you're already giving to yourself, to your kids, to your family, perhaps, you know, maybe you go to church or the mosque, um, temple, and so you're giving there too. But I do want to tell you that if you are looking at organization, you're trying to figure out um, what to do, and you're not sure, maybe you go to church, for example, and you give your tithes, um, your 10%. I just want to remind you all, and I don't want it to be a religious argument. I just want to quickly say that your 10% is not necessarily directly to the church. It's doing God's works. So if you feel the need to give and you can't do two, then I just want to let you know that you can give to the other organization according to the Bible rules, that is. <laughs> I just want to put that out there. Hey, I got no problem with that. I got no problem. You did the right thing. It says, say it again. <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, I have to do this tithing. And I'm like, okay, that's great. But then they look at it as my tithing is only to the church. But where's your money going? I'm not sure. Okay, you know, or they're tithing at, at a mega million church. And they're on the streets or almost on the streets. But your pastor is driving a Benz and has a helicopter. It confuses me. I don't want to get into this. It's a whole different topic, but I just want to let you know that your tithing is your time. Your tithing is helping people in need. So if you see a good organization and you have $5, you know, that organization would take $5 to help someone, um, like Beyond for Blessings, to help feed a family. This is all I'm saying. You do what you want to do, but don't forget, it's your time. It's your funds, as long as it's for God's work not necessarily for the building that you enter into. 100 year building fund that we're still trying to get new windows for. I just wanted to put that <laughs> out there. Um, but the, you know, one of the things um, that angers me, what happens to charities all the time is uh, when I think about the homeless and uh, food, I don't care for, in fact, it's one of the, um, I always have to ask God to work with me on. Um, I, we all have pet peeves. One of them for me is if anybody says first annual, that's a, you, you're done. That's a <laughs> this is our first uh, annual meeting. This is yeah, that's a pet peeve. Uh, Apple is another one, <laughs> Trump, but <laughs> I got a few. But one of them you're going to really get before you mess with women and children. We being rude to women and then also i can't stand uh, what people do to homelessness and home you see people on the street or abusing children who are sleeping with their parents in the cars um i'm sorry sleeping with, with the parents in the car because they don't have anywhere else to go not right. sleeping with parents I'm gonna make sure right. i'll be clear um uh, but uh you know those type of things that irritates me and i think that people need to be uh more you know what's going on and it's not to necessarily point that person out and embarrass them mm -hmm. you know as a te teachers who sitting there hey Cherry, hey uh you know stephanie you don't have a place to go i know you're staying at home you're calling them out in front of everybody or you know and that or even if you're doing privately that like the child needs to be reminded for that that's cold 
what you would do is like, hey, is there anything I need? It, there's always a level of grace. I've seen where um, there's not to the restaurant. Um, um, we had a uh, lunch meeting and the lady at the register had a black eye. Um, but people want to call it out and this, that, and the other, instead of just handing her a card, you know, with a number and when you give the money, you know, for a DV company to reach out, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. You don't sit there and point it out or ask them in front of people and that working. And she can't miss work. She probably was, it may not be a DV situation Well, it turned out she was trying to, you know, save a child's life, you know, all these different things. Is you have to be careful and understand and offer level of grace. Bedside manner does not apply just to the hospital mm-hmm. you know, in, in life. So just stop abusing people and stop picking on people. I know it's probably not the best thing to say in the world, but I did say that, you know, hey, you know, there's still uh, what they used to do, uh, put uh, telephone books in um, t- pillowcases or uh, batteries. <laughs> you know, so don't do that to people. And if I see it, I have no problem calling you and your child out for laughing or being dismissive of people. Don't do that. And I need more people to step up. Agreed. Um, uh, you know, that was pretty much all what we uh have regarding that at the moment and things. And I just wanted to make sure to get a couple of groups out. I want to say thank you to everybody who who's watching, who's supporting, uh, who's getting, you know, sharing this, whatever the case may be. I want to thank you all because this is a very serious issue. Many of our charities are struggling. Maybe we just don't feel comfortable getting out. they great on helping people, but maybe not there media wise. Some are not able to do that, mm-hmm. but, you know, and they just need help. So we're just want to provide a platform to do this. And we'll probably look to hopefully try to get this out maybe every other month or so. That requires to be uh, of a need more, please do contact us. Uh, we're, we're more than happy to help. You can contact Miss Jalice, uh, you can contact me, you can uh, contact uh, the lady before us, all these different things. Um, you know, we're here to help. Um, our email is enliven, E N L I V E N G M. Again, that's enliven. Uh, GM is E N L I V E N G M at gmail.com. You can also reach me at eight. 888069. And you can also go to our Facebook and our um, YouTube pages and also our Twitter and Instagram. Our webpage is enlivengm.com. Uh, We're working on updating that and also our other numbers. So please bear with us. Uh, Ms. Jalice, anything you want to add? Final thoughts and words? No. Um, thank you for coming. Thank you for listening to me, to you, and <laughs> And to Bound for Blessings. And I would say, um, finally, I know it's the giving season. Everyone's into it. Um, but please be kind. Don't forget that not everyone celebrates Christmas. Um, so that's one thing. And I want to say that just because someone does not celebrate as you celebrate, does not give cause nor reason to disregard them and their and what they're going through. Mm-hmm. So, um, it, so it doesn't matter, be it atheist, Jew, Muslim, whatever, and you're Christian, it doesn't matter to me because my thing is no matter what you want to call your God or not, maybe you just, uh, I'm just spiritual in the world. If you want to bring people to your side, you bring it through good works. You, you show, you show what, what Allah, God, Jesus, Elohim, you show what they would want you to show. You don't show the negativity of the world around you. So keep that in mind for the holidays. Bless those around you. Bless yourself. Know that people love you. Know that I love you, even if I don't know you. I love you because God put you here for a reason. Amen. Because you don't, and like you said, to piggyback off of that, you know, if you need help, I don't care if, like, if you're not a person of faith, if you're atheist or whatever denomination or whatever you're at, and there's a Christian group, go to them. They should not. That's not part of being the joyful uh, uh, part of that. It's there to give. Just like uh, I give an example, the JCC, the Jewish Christian Center, and there's different similar ones. You you don't have to be Jewish to go there. Mm -hmm. They sit there. And uh, that may be sponsoring, but they sitting there trying to help people. They offer free. One of the ones things they did, they offer free swimming classes, uh, 
free swimming lessons all summer long to, to you know uh, kids who in need um in new york um there was a several uh, church groups in the philippines <laughs> and uh queens that's willing to help out uh do a whole bunch of things there's some of them you know obviously to a number of people that may be a lottery oh i may not get it you never know the mm -hmm. thing is even if you the fact that you take action okay mm -hmm. helps so much uh because that level when you have apathy when you have inaction then people are not going to uh care and then you're teaching a horrible lesson not only to your family but to you mm -hmm. mm -hmm. please uh just be very careful with that yes mm -hmm. i thank you all Oh, uh, remember, last but not least, Ms. Jalise, now you are an official one of our co-hosts of Shore and Live and Global Media. Yes! <laughs> so, and, and, I, and I have a fellow with me, so I appreciate you very much, although <clears throat> we got some issues, but we, that's, cool. <laughs> that's, okay. another, that's another conversation. <laughs> but, but welcome, welcome to the family. Thank you. No problem. Uh, stay, stay right there. So I appreciate everybody. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>